so far we've discussed what we want out of our social choice functions. We want voter systems that are anonymous, neutral, and nearly decisive. And what we're ready for now is an introduction to various different types of voting that satisfy those procedures. So what we're going to imagine is that we have a large society of people voting, and what we're going to do is work through an example with all sorts of different ways to determine the outcome of that election. So numerous different social choice functions. And where all of these methods get interesting is when we have more than two candidates or parties in the election. What I have over here on the right that we'll be using in all these different social choice functions is what I'm calling a voter profile. So we've got five different candidates, A, B, C, D, and E. And across the top here, what I have is the number of people with that voter preference. What each voter has done has given a ranking to all of the candidates. So they've indicated who their first choice is, their second choice, their third choice, their fourth choice, and then their last place choice, according to this chart. And it may in fact be the case that there are certain voters who have the same voter profiles. So what we're envisioning in this scenario is that we have actually 18 voters who have this voter profile, 12 voters with this voter profile, and so on down the line. So every individual voter has the same amount of power and we've collected the results of their first choice through fifth choice and what we would like to do with that input is make a decision about who ought to have won the election. Now the standard method and used in most places in the United States right now is what's called majority rules voting. That is, each person votes for their first place candidate and their first place candidate only. All of the information about their second choice through their last place choice is entirely ignored. And what we do is we declare the winner to be the person with the largest number of first place votes. So when we focus solely on this row in the table, because we're using majority rules voting, we see that candidate A has 18 first place votes while all other candidates have fewer than that. And so we would declare candidate A the winner via majority rules voting. But what's worth pointing out when you have more than two candidates is that candidate A has actually won here via a plurality of votes and not a majority of votes. Let me explain what those two terms mean. In this example, we have 55 voters. Someone having a majority of the votes would have more than 50% of the votes. In this example with 55 voters, someone would need 28 votes in order to have a majority of the votes. Candidate A has a plurality of the votes. A plurality more generally is when you have N voters and K candidates. Someone wins by a plurality when they have greater than n over k votes. So a proportional victory. In this example, I have 55 voters, five candidates. A plurality victor would have more than 11 votes, which is 55, my number of voters, divided by five, my number of candidates. So candidate A in this situation has won by a plurality, but not a majority. In fact, the majority of voters, these 37 other voters, they all actually ranked A last place. The majority of our voters would prefer candidate not A. And that's a big distinction when you have more than two candidates. So perhaps the easiest change we could make to our voting system if that plurality versus majority bothers us is to say, we're going to first conduct a plurality election. And if there is a candidate who has a majority of the votes with more than two parties in this first round of voting, then that person is going to win. However, if we have someone who is only winning because they have a plurality and not the majority, then what we're going to do is just take a look at the top two candidates who have the largest number of first place votes. 
So in this example, candidate A does not hold a majority of the votes. Candidate A only holds a plurality of the votes. And candidate B, and candidate B is the candidate in second place in terms of number of first place votes. So what a plurality with runoff system does is it says, let's eliminate all other candidates, candidates C, D, and E from the ballot. And let's imagine that we've re-polled our electorate. So we've eliminated candidates C, D, and E. So all of these people over here who would have preferred one of those candidates first will now transfer their votes to the remaining candidate that they prefer. So in fact, for these 10 voters over here and these four voters over here, candidate B was their second place choice. They actually liked candidate B a lot, just not as much as these other candidates. And so these voters can now be thought of as voting for candidate B and were registering more than just their first place vote. In fact, all of the voters, when you eliminate candidates C, D, and E, other than these 18 who voted for A as their first place choice, all of these other voters would prefer candidate B to candidate A. So once we've held the runoff election and eliminated candidates C, D, and E simultaneously, we end up with a system where candidate B has 37 votes and candidate A only has 18. Candidate B now has the majority. So candidate B would be our winner under this plurality with runoff method. One more example of a social choice system that has a similar flavor is to do this process of plurality with runoff, but to do it slower than we did in the last round. So in the last round, after one vote, we realized that there was no candidate with a simple majority, and so we eliminated a large group of candidates immediately and just held a second vote. So in the plurality with runoff method, there will only ever be two votes, at most, your initial vote and the runoff vote. In instant runoff voting, we do a similar thing, but more slowly. After the first round of voting, we realize that our candidate that's currently in the lead, candidate A, does not have a majority of the votes. But instead of eliminating candidates C, D, and E all at exactly the same time, we're just going to eliminate one of those candidates. And the candidate that we eliminate is the one that had the fewest number of first place votes. So as you see over here, candidate E had six first place votes while candidates A through D had a larger number of first place votes. So candidate E is eliminated from the ballot. Next, we vote again, only between candidates A, B, C, and D. All these voters right here still have their first place choice in the running, so their votes go for candidate A, B, C, and D respectively. However, these four voters who would have preferred candidate E will now be casting their vote for candidate B, while these two voters right here will be casting their vote for candidate C. When we now conduct the vote, we see that candidate D has nine first place votes, while candidates B and C have more than that, as does candidate A. So candidate D would be the next candidate eliminated in the instant runoff voting system. Once we eliminate candidate D, we repeat this process, 18 votes for candidate A, 12 plus four votes for candidate B, giving us a total of 16 votes for candidate B, and 10 plus nine plus two votes for candidate C, which gives candidate C a total of 21 votes. At this point, candidate A has 18 first place votes, Candidate B has 12 plus 4, which is 16 first place votes. But candidate C has 12 plus 9 plus 2 first place votes for a total of 21 first place votes. So candidate B is out next, and our final round of voting will take place between candidates A and C. Again, notice that candidate A in this example is a very polarizing candidate. This candidate is either loved or absolutely hated. So every voter who remains in this system here through here 
prefers candidate C to candidate A. This gives candidate A a total of 18 first place votes, and as before, candidate C, 37 first place votes, meaning that A is eliminated from the process, and candidate C would actually win the election via this instant runoff voting process.